Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today I have something very cool to show you. This is the first Pokemon World Championship winning deck. The first Pokemon Championship was, was held in um, Seattle, Washington in 2002, August 4th. Uh, the winner of that championship was a person by the name of Dylan Austin. He was competing on the Neo On Senior 11 to 14 on a tournament with a total of 88 players, players ranging from Croatia, Czech Republic, Germany, Greece, Israel, Italy, the UK, the United States, of course, and many other places. Now, part of the reason that I wanted to collect this deck is that, of course, he has historical significance. He was the first World Championship winning deck, at least in this age category. Um, and I wanted to run you through the cards that are in the deck and what I think the overall strategy is. As Dylan himself put it when he won the championship some 16 years ago, he said, I got my slow kings out first to stop his trainers. That was the key. End quote. So we already see that the slow king is part of his um, main strategy, but we'll find out soon why. Before we do that, we're going to just go through the cards that are in this deck. Of course, it's a deck with 60 cards. I have gotten all the cards as a first edition because first edition stamp is nice and we don't have that anymore, unfortunately. Anyway, I will put links in the description to where I got the list of the cards and also a news article from the tournament itself. But without further ado, the deck consists of four Neo Genesis Slow Kings. Um, and you'll see that most of the sets in this deck, because of the time we were in in 2002, range from Neo Genesis all the way to the Team Rocket and also to the Legendary Collection. But we start with four Neo Genesis Slow Kings. And then we have, of course, the Slowpoke, which we get the Slow King from. These are also Neo Genesis. Really appreciate this artwork. Looks almost like a paper mache Slowpoke. Very strange, but also very cool. And something you might notice um, later on, you, I want you to keep an eye on the types of Pokemon that we have. So, so far we have Psychic types. Then this is really the King piece of the of the deck I would say from what I was able to gather this is the dark for alligator neo destiny and I think according to Dylan his main or at least what I've been able to gather from the deck his main strategy was to crush the opponent with this dark for alligator he has three of these in his deck and because it's dark for alligator he also needs of course the dark croconos which he has four of also from Neo Destiny. And of course, a Crocona must evolve from a Totodile, so he also has four Totodiles. This time, he chose the ones from Neo Genesis. And I think in Neo Genesis itself, there were two types, but this was the one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken that there were two types, but this was the one in the deck. Then, to spice things up, he has this Neo, this, um, Neo Revelation Suicune. And something that I think has been a major strategy of, his, of this deck has been the Pokemon powers that we'll look into more detail later on. Then, he also has four <laughs> Clefas, also from Neo Destiny. Uh, sorry, Neo Genesis. Um, baby Pokemons have very particular... Um, a very particular thing about them, which is that you always have to flip a coin before you can attack to hurt them. So this is the Clefus. And then we move on into the trainer section. So he has quite a lot of trainers. He has Professor Elm, Neo Genesis, four of them. Then he has Bill's Teleporter, also from Neo Genesis, four of them as well. Then he has, from uh, the Legendary Collection, four Pokemon Traders. 
So four of these rare cards. And curiously, I think he chose the Neo, uh, sorry, the Legendary Collection because this is actually an older card. Um, I don't remember which set, but it's one of the original sets. But maybe in this tournament they were not allowed to use that. Then, one Rocket card, the Boss's Way. We have also one Time Capsule. A couple of Double Gusts from Neo Genesis. Time Capsule was from Neo Genesis as well, I forgot to say. Then we have Gold Berries, three of them from Neo Genesis. These are Pokemon tools, which we don't use anymore in the current Pokemon game. Another berry, this time Balloon Berry. He has two of these. Then Super Energy Retrieval, also from Neo Genesis. A Rocket's Hideout as the last trainer card. This is a stadium card, which you, we also don't have anymore in the game. So once you play this card, it stays in the game until someone else puts another one. And lastly, the energy cards. Now, this is where some interesting things should start happening in your head because he has only 13 water energy cards. But as we know, we've seen at least Psychic. Uh, Pokemon with the Slow King and the Slowpoke. So what's really going on here? Well, something I've noticed while looking at the deck is that, as we say, his strategy, he himself admitted his strategy with the Slow King was to stop the trainer cards. So the Slow Kings are not even meant to attack. That's why he doesn't have any psychic energies. They're just meant to deter the opponent from hurting him with the trainer cards. On the other hand, the Slowpoke can attack and it's quite an interesting attack as well because it uses actually a water energy which fits very well with the deck. Then, of course, we have the Totodile and for Alligator part. So this is quite, I mean, normal that you can use these Totodiles to start to get a heads up on your opponent. And then, of course, you try to get the Croconaut to evolve, and then you have to get the Feraligator to evolve again. Now, nowadays, this Dark Feraligator wouldn't be so powerful because we don't have baby Pokemon so much, so that's, that's the deal with his Pokemon power, which is Scare. On the other hand, his um, Crushing Blow attack is quite decent. But, of course, if your entire strategy is dependent on evolving your Totodile to a Croconaut and then to evolve that again to a Feraligator, you need some sort of method to cycle through cards as much as possible. And I think that's where his trainer cards come from. Because if you look at the trainer cards that he has chosen, it's all about drawing cards and seeking the cards that you want. So we have Professor Um, where you can shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw seven cards. Build, teleporter, you flip a coin and then you can draw four cards if you get heads. This one you can trade cards that you have in your hand for a Pokemon, basic or evolution in your deck. The boss's way also specifically searching for this dark for alligator. You have to search for an evolution card with dark in its name. Um, the tight capsule, it's more about, I would say... Right, well it has also to do with getting cards in this time from your discard pile. So even if you're, you get your Croconaw and your Feraligator and they get knocked out, you can still recover them using this. I think the Double Gust is sort of more of a defensive card in this way. Um, you force your opponent to switch a card, but he also gets to choose which one he chooses for you. So it's, I guess if you're, your opponent, your Pokemon is about to get knocked out, you would want to play this to try to buy some time and the gold berries or the gold berries and the balloon berries are kind of meant in my opinion to hold your alligator as long as possible to cure him from any damage or to make him retreat so you can buy time without having to discard the energies which is what the balloon berry accomplishes some more retrieval energies and this one is quite a key one as well Assuming the, there's no other stadium cards coming by the opponent, 
as long as you have this one in, your Dark for Alligator will get even more energy, so you can survive any attacks even more. Now, but this still leaves some Pokemon cards that we pass through, which is the Suicune and the Clefas. Of course, Clefas are all about getting those extra cards again, so this is in congruence with the whole strategy of trying to cycle through your deck as much as possible and as, fetch, as fast as possible so you can reach that Dark for Alligator so you can knock your opponent out. Of course, also being a baby Pokemon, you can sort of buy time or you can rely a bit more on luck because you need to flip the opponent needs to flip a coin if he wants to attack you and knock you out. And the Suicune is another one. I think this is more like a support card for the um, for the Dark for Alligator. So if you're still trying to reach those Dark for Alligators and you're not really getting lucky in getting them, you might be lucky and get the Suicune. And in this case, as you can read in the Pokemon Power, as long as Suicune is your active Pokemon, Suicune and energy cards attached to it aren't affected by effects from trainer cards other than stadium cards. So this way your opponent can't really make you discard any cards from this, so it's quite a resilient Pokemon in this sense. And then of course you have the attack. Flip a coin, if heads, this attack does 30 damage plus 10 more damage. If tails, this attack does 30 damage and if your oppo opponent has any benched Pokemon, he or she chooses one of them and switches it with defending Pokemon. Do the damage before switching the Pokemon. So this one also is trying to force the opponent to either die quickly or to switch through other of his Pokemon. So if he's not really well prepared, this Suicune could deal quite a lot of damage. And this is it actually. This is all about the uh, the winning deck. There is other. There was another winning deck that I haven't uh, gotten yet for a different age group, I think. Um, I'll have to see if I'm interested in getting that one or not. But I still think this one has quite a lot of significance historically speaking and the strategy is quite interesting once you start looking into it you know it's just quite extraordinary that you would consider having a deck with where you trying to focus as well involving your slow poke um but you can't really attack with the evolution as well it's just there like a punching bag while you try to prevent your um opponent from hurting you and at the same time while you're trying to evolve the other Pokemon that you want which is a Dark for Alligator. Curiously enough he only has three Dark for Alligators whereas Slow Kings he has four of so maybe this is something that he did through trial and, trial and error and he figured out he would rather have four of Slow Kings and three Dark for Alligators rather than the other way around but either way it's all very interesting um, right now I have this in these more recent type uh, sleeves, but I am looking forward to try to buy some old sleeves if I can find them, some Neo era sleeves. This would be quite interesting to have the cards in, and this will be now part of my collection. Uh, thank you for watching, I hope you uh, enjoyed looking through this um, very historic piece of Pokemon history, you could say. Of course, this is not the actual deck that he played with, but nonetheless, this is a very interesting um, interesting deck in the way it's built. Uh, the cards as well, they're all Wizards of the Coast cards. I forgot to say that the actual tournament was set uh, by Wizards of the Coast, and they did not held a World Championship in 2003 because that was the year that tra the transition was happening between Wizards of the Coast and the Pokemon Company. So the next World Championship tournament only happened in 2004 and by then we did not have any Wizards of the Coast cards anymore. So this is actually the only deck from the Wizards of the Coast era that won the World Championship. There were no more um, cards from Wizards of the Coast, to my knowledge, that were featured in World Championships. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.